It doesn't take long. I was preaching years ago in Union Center, South Dakota. Now, Union Center is right there. It's not even on the map. And South Dakota puts everything they can find on the map just to kind of fill in the white places, you know. Well, there were 40 people in the whole town. 38 of them came to church. The other two must have been pulling a calf, I reckon. I don't know. But boy, we had a great meeting, and the preacher said, Hey, Hovind, let's go down to Rapid City. They've got a bunch of dinosaurs in the museum there. I said, All right, I like dinosaurs. Let's go. So we all drove down to Rapid City. We came to this museum, and a guide met us at the door. He said, Hey, folks, would you like me to give you a tour? We said, That would be great, sir. Well, the first place we stopped on the tour was the geologic time chart. They have it lit up, and it's behind glass, and it's holy and sacred. Don't dare touch that thing, you know. So we're standing over there, and the guide said, Now, folks, this layer of rock right here is about 70 million years old. And it's so cool, because they always get that sanctimonious tone in their voice, you know. 70 million years old. Oh. <laughs> well, my daughter was 12 years old at the time. She raised her hand. She said, Mr., how do you know that layer is 70 million years old? He said, honey, that's a good question. We tell the age of the layers by what types of fossils we find in them. They're called index fossils. And by the way, that's correct. That's what the textbook says. Scientists use index fossils to determine the age of rock layers. She said, thank you, sir. We walked around the other side. We're standing over here. And the guide said, now, folks, these bones are about 100 million years old. My daughter raised her hand again. She said, sir, how do you know those bones are 100 million years old? He said, well, honey, we tell the age of the bones by which layer they came from. She said, uh, sir, when we were standing over there, you told me you knew the age of the layers by the bones, and now you're telling me you know the age of the bones by the layers. She said, isn't that circular reasoning? I thought, wow, a chip off the old block. <laughs> that guy had the strangest look on his face. It was almost as if he were thinking. He looked at my daughter. He looked at me. I wasn't about to help him. I thought, wow, this is going to be good. I have got to hear this. He looked back at my daughter. He said, wow, you're right. That is circular reasoning. He said, I never thought of that before. That fellow drove 50 miles one way that night to, hear me come, to come hear me speak in Union Center, South Dakota. The crowd swelled to 39. We set up a chair in the aisle. Afterwards, he talked to me for an hour. He said, Hovind, is everything I believe about geology wrong? I teach this stuff at the college. I said, oh, no, 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 I like geology. I've got a huge fossil collection, rock collection, mineral collection. I teach earth science. I love studying geology. I said, but as far as the layers being different ages, I said, yes, sir, I'm sorry. That is all baloney. It's based on circular reasoning. I'll show you. Here's a textbook that tells the kids to date the rocks by the fossils. And on the very next page, it says date the fossils by the rocks. On the next page. And they don't catch it. It's a lie. It's circular reasoning. The intelligent layman has long suspected circular reasoning in the use of rocks to date fossils and fossils to date rocks. The geologist has never bothered to think of a good reply, feeling the explanations are not worth the trouble as long as the work brings results. Hmm. It cannot be denied from a strictly philosophical standpoint, geologists are arguing in a circle. The relative ages of rocks are determined by the organisms they contain. They, they date the rocks by the fossils and the fossils by the rocks. Ever since the beginning of the 19th century, Fossils have been and still are the best and most accurate method of dating and correlating the rocks in which they occur. Apart from very modern examples, which really are archaeology, I can think of no cases of radioactive decay being used to date fossils. They don't date fossils by potassium argon dating or carbon dating. That's not how they do it. Radiometric dating would not even be possible if the geologic column had not been erected first. There's no way to simply to look at a fossil and say how old it is unless you know the age of the rocks it comes from. This is Niles Eldridge, one of the most famous evolutionists alive today. He said, and this poses something of a problem. Yeah, something poses a big problem, Niles. If we date the rocks by the fossils, how can we then turn around and talk about patterns of evolutionary change through time in the fossil record? Circular reasoning. This guy said, the rocks do date the fossils, but the fossils date the rocks more accurately. <laughs> I think the cheese done fell out of his sandwich. That's what I think. Okay, he's... He's a few fries short of a Happy Meal. Mm -hmm. It's based on circular reasoning, okay? This guy said the charge of circular reasoning can be handled several ways. 
It can be ignored is not the proper concern of the public. It can be denied by calling down the law of evolution. It can be admitted as a common practice or avoided by pragmatic reasoning. But it is all based on circular reasoning. Actually, at the Scopes Monkey Trial, 1925, over here in Dayton, Tennessee. How far is Dayton from here, Steve? About 100 miles. Okay. This is what they were going to use as evidence for evolution. The lowest layers are obviously the oldest. Page 275 of the court transcript. No, the oldest layers are not obviously the oldest. Did you know in still water, sediment layers settle out the bottom one first, and then the second one, and then the third one? That's correct. But in moving water, you can get five or six or ten layers to form simultaneously. They form from one end and travel across. So it's possible to have a fossil on the bottom that is younger than a fossil on top if it's moving water. There's a great video tape called Experiments in Stratification. It covers all that if you want more on that. Or get our video number six. We'll get more of that later. I like to ask evolutionists. I say, guys, your geologic column contains limestone uh, quite a few places. If I handed you a piece of limestone, how would you know if it's 100 million year old Jurassic limestone or 600 million year old Cambrian limestone? I mean, exactly what's the difference? They'd say, well, the only way to tell the difference is by the index fossils. Uh, that's precisely my point. They date the layers by the fossils. This textbook shows the kids a trilobite. And it says, boys and girls, trilobites make good index fossils. If a trilobite is found in a rock layer, the rock layer probably formed 500 to 600 million years ago. I don't think so. Somebody found a human shoe print where the guy with a shoe on had stepped on and smashed a trilobite. They asked evolutionists all over, how on earth could a human step on a trilobite? If trilobites lived 500 million years ago and man didn't get here till, you know, three million years ago, and they didn't start, didn't start wearing shoes till 10,000 years ago. How could a human step on a trilobite? One atheist said, well, it's obviously. Uh, the only an answer would be that uh, aliens visited the planet 500 million years ago. <laughs> oh, them aliens will do it every time. <laughs> Another guy said, well, maybe there was a large trilobite shaped like a shoe that fell on a small one. Now, there are some big trilobites, okay, but I don't think they're shaped like a shoe. Actually, the trilobite has the most complicated eyeball ever. Trilobite eyes are unbelievable. And this is one of the first creatures to evolve, and it already has the most complex eye, which it, just the eye is one of the most complex features you could have. Now, trilobites are not index fossils for anything, okay? There are all kinds of different types of trilobites, and there probably are some still alive today. Certainly, the Baltic isopod is still alive. A guy sent me a couple weeks ago, about a couple months ago, I guess, a whole jar full of trilobites from the Prudhoe Bay uh, treatment, water treatment plant up there for the oil uh, um, factory they've got, oil refining uh, rig. When they arrived in Pensacola, Florida, they were still alive in the jar. But I don't know how to keep a trilobite alive. I mean, you know, you give it mouth to what, you know, some resuscitation, but they all died, but we got them in our museum there. Somebody just sent me a large one that they got down in the Caribbean, about this big, it's in our museum, and it's, it was frozen. They said, yeah, I pulled it off the rock myself down in the Caribbean, still alive. They call it some kind of roach. Roach, it looks like a big trilobite. This textbook shows the kids a graptolite. It says, boys and girls, this is 410 million years old. I don't think so. Graptolites were found still alive in the South Pacific 10 years ago. So if you find graptolite, you can't use that as an index fossil for any age rock, okay? They tell the kids in school the lobe-finned fish is the index fossil for Devonian, 325 million years old. See that short leg, boys and girls? He's got a little bitty leg and then the fin. Ah, see, that proves he's evolving from a leg to a fin. No, that's a lie. The lobe-finned fish are still alive today. They're swimming around the Indian Ocean. And when they caught the first one in 1938, the scientists looked at it and said, wow, would you look at that? They survived for 325 million years. <laughs> it never dawned on them once to question the geologic column. That thought never crossed their brain. You don't question the geologic column. It is holy and sacred. You just have to say it survived for 325 million years. It's in the textbooks today. And they still say it's the index fossil for 325 million year old rock, even though they know they're swimming around the ocean. How can they be that dumb? This lady wrote a book about it, A Fish Caught in Time. She says, boys and girls, this is our own great uncle, 40 million times removed. She does look a little fishy, you know, kind of around the gills there. Okay. 